This video will review the most frequently made mistakes by operators when installing electrofusion fittings. The focus will be on eight primary areas. One, insufficient cleaning with clean water and isopropyl alcohol or acetone. Two, insufficient peeling or scraping. Three, improper clamping or stress neutralization. Four, improperly conducting multiple fusions on the same fitting. Five, improper marking or assembly, stab depth errors, improperly cut pipe ends. Six, failure to observe appropriate cooling times. Seven, improperly calibrated electrofusion processors or power sources. Eight, out of specification PE pipe or tubing. While this is not an exhaustive list, it does represent what we believe to be the primary issues for failures. We'll examine these various mistakes by observing 1. Both failed and good fusion cutaways and crush samples of GFCP's fittings and or 2. Error messages from the electrofusion processor. Electrofusion mistakes 1. Insufficient cleaning Failure to clean pipe first with clean water and then with appropriate strength and purity isopropyl alcohol or acetone can leave embedded gravel and dirt, oil, soap, drilling fluid residue, etc. on the PE pipe or tubing. When these contaminants are present, they act as a barrier to good fusion. Even when the pipe is subsequently properly scraped or peeled, failure to begin by washing down the pipe and removing any embedded gravel will prematurely dull the blades of the pipe scraping and peeling tools. In addition, if the scraping or peeling tools have trailing bearing, these bearings can draw contaminant residues back into the fusion zone. Here's some examples of poor pre-cleaning GFCP has seen in its failure analysis. 2. Poor scraping or peeling As a manufacturer of electrofusion fittings and equipment, and a company that's analyzed thousands of failed joints, the absence of scraping and or poor scraping practices represent the cause of the vast majority of fitting failures. The science of pipe peeling and scraping has evolved and improved nearly as much as the resins used to manufacture PE pipe and fittings. But one thing has never changed. It was and is absolutely essential to remove the oxidized or otherwise contaminated outer layer of the PE pipe or tubing in the fusion zone. We know that some electrofusion customers continue to use paint scrapers and other low-tech devices to prepare the pipe surface prior to fusion. While it's possible to use a paint scraper to properly prepare the surface of the pipe, it takes considerable time and diligence on the part of the operator to do it right. It's like choosing to use a phone book and rotary dial phone while a smartphone remains in your pocket. Both might work but one gets the number right more often and faster than the other. The new peeling tools are far superior to the old scrapers. For one, they circle the pipe and remove a consistent ribbon around the complete diameter of the pipe. An individual using a paint scraper to prepare the pipe for an electrofusion coupling rarely has visibility to the underside of the pipe. Here's a picture of the ribbon produced by a peeler. Compare that to the results obtained with a paint scraper. Now, look at the bottom of this pipe when the operator thought he was through using the paint scraper. Here are several examples of fittings that have been crushed where good peeling or scraping is compared to no or poor scraping was evident. Three, improper clamping, stress neutralization. There are three basic areas where errors occur when clamping. Use of the wrong clamp, misapplication of the right clamp, and failure to neutralize the torque forces on the components being clamped together. It is essential for operators to use the clamping system designed by the manufacturer for the fitting being installed. Sidewall fittings come in two basic designs bottom load, and top load. 
Never use a top load clamp on a fitting designed for bottom loading. A bottom load clamp pulls the side of the fittings down against the pipe. As a result, the base of the bottom load fitting sets loosely on the pipe until the clamp conforms it to the pipe. Likewise, a top load fitting sits proud on the pipe and the top load clamp presses down on it to conform to the pipe. Additionally, some coupling clamps are designed for heavy torque potential and some are designed for lighter torque applications. For example, GFCP's multi-clamp kit is fully capable of handling the torque forces of two coiled pipe ends two to four inch pipe, but a two inch vice grip clamp is not. The two inch vice grip clamp is designed for the outlets of EF high volume tapping tee to a two inch service main. Likewise, the misapplication of the right clamp can also create the potential for producing a substandard fusion. To work properly, the clamping forces must be distributed in accordance with the manufacturer's design. If a clamp is off-center, the clamp will not deliver the appropriate forces. Note, when a saddle clamp is applied in favor of either end of the fitting, the high side of the fitting may lose the molten plastics because its cold zone is not in appropriate contact with the pipe. Finally, the most frequent mistake we see in clamping occurs when the operator fuses the service main to an EF high volume tapping tee before fusing the fitting to the main and fails to neutralize the torque on the outlet during the fusion and cooling period. We recommend that the operator install the Electrofusion high volume tapping tee to the main and let it fully cool before installing the service main to the outlet. However, we realize this may not be possible in some cases. Considering the fact that most of the two inch service mains are coiled pipe, the clamping devices used to install high volume tapping tees are not designed to overcome these forces. The operator must follow the recommended torque remediation procedures as shown in this diagram. Note that the diagram makes use of stakes on either side of the service main. Four. Multiple fusions on the same fitting. Some customers allow multiple fusions on the same fitting. If you're an operator who works for a company that prohibits this practice, you must follow your employer's procedures. From GFCP standpoint, two and even three fusions are not a problem if the appropriate circumstances exist and procedures are followed. Let's discuss these critical circumstances and procedures. Determining the circumstances that cause the fitting fault error code is the first step. If the fault error occurred as a result of a short stab or bind due to a misalignment, no secondary fusion can be attempted. However, if the fault resulted from a lead being knocked off the fitting, the generator running out of gas, or the power source failing to deliver the appropriate energy during the fusion process, the fitting may be refused. Now let's address the critical procedures that must be followed. Before attempting a refuse, the fitting must always be allowed to cool to ambient temperature. This can take considerable time. It's often more expedient to cut out the fitting and start over with a new one. But there are circumstances where it makes sense to wait. For example, the time it takes to cool a one inch coupling is more valuable than the cost of the second fitting. But if you're fusing the third leg of an 8-inch equal T, it makes sense to wait. There's one other case that we see from time to time. If you're operating in the automatic resistor mode, it's possible to complete an entire fusion, remove the leads, and unintentionally put the leads back on the same fitting. That's why we recommend that the operator mark the pipe adjacent to the fitting immediately after the fusion cycle is complete. Some customers include the time when the fusion was completed, as well as the cooling time in clamp and rough handling. A fitting that has been fused twice in close succession on a pressurized main may look like this. Five, improper marking or stab depth errors. Improperly cut pipe ends. These installation errors occur with some frequency. If the operator fails to properly mark the stab depths or to observe them when completing the clamping process, at least two errors can occur. A short stab looks like this. The pipe ends do not meet in the center cold zone. 
That may result in a short stab fault on the processor if the molten plastic is not contained and the coil wires short against one another during the fusion process. Here's an example of an over and under stab. In this case, the over stabbed side would be strong, but the short stabbed side would be weaker than anticipated. In each of these cases, the fusion joint is compromised. When installing an electrofusion coupling, it's important to cut the pipe end squarely. If the pipe is cut on a bias, it's possible to create the equivalent effect of a short stab. We encourage operators to cut straight up and down, but in no case should the bias exceed 5 degrees top to bottom. Doing so will create a compromised joint and may result in a short stab fault on the processor. 6. Failure to observe appropriate cooling times Occasionally, we'll find instances where operators fail to observe the appropriate cooling times. The processor only indicates that cooling time in clamp. It's important to note that each fitting has as many as three cooling periods. The cooling period in the clamp, the cooling period before tapping, and the cooling period before rough handling. But all fittings have at least two of these. Specifically, the cooling time in clamp and the total cooling time before rough handling. The general rule of thumb is that the cooling time in clamp is one-third of the total cooling time before rough handling. If the cooling time is not observed, the fitting can be compromised. 7. Improperly calibrated electrofusion processors or power sources It's important for customers to observe the recalibration recommendations of their electrofusion processor. GFCP's recommended calibration interval is every two years. This calibration confirms that the voltage output and input requirements for an appropriate fusion are maintained. The processor will alert the operator when this date is approaching and when it's expired. It's equally important that the party doing the recalibration is an authorized and properly trained recalibration agent. Likewise, power sources, generators, and inverters must be maintained and properly sized for the fittings being installed. The generator must be running at full throttle. And finally, the largest source of issues in this area are associated with the use of under-gauged or over-length extension cords and pigtails. If the power source is compromised, the operator will be frustrated with error messages and the loss of time. 8. Out-of-specification PE pipe or tubing Potential culprits in this area include pipe that fails to meet the specifications for out-of-round, ovality, particularly relative on coiled pipe, OD tolerance, or failure of an operator to address toe-in. In rare cases, it can also include improper formulation of resin. If you're unfamiliar with any of these terms, consult the ASTM standards for more information. Of these, we'll address only the most frequently identified culprit, ovality issues. Ovality problems occur as a result of unequal weight loading or pipe coiling. Checking ovality is relatively simple. Use a ruler to measure top to bottom and then side to side. Divide the smaller number by the larger and subtract that decimal from 1. For example, 4.25 inches divided by 4.75 inches equals 0.89. 1 minus 0.89 equals 11% ovality. To be within tolerance specifications, the ovality must be 5% or less. This problem makes pipe difficult to properly peel, couplings difficult to assemble on the pipe, and may result in an ill fit between the pipe and fittings. These can compromise the quality of the fusion joint. To correct this, prior to cleaning and peeling, clamp the anticipated fusion area of the pipe or tubing with a properly sized full encirclement clamp. This should reform the material within a few minutes and bring it into tolerance. When it comes to addressing ovality on coil piping, special equipment has been developed. For example, McElroy's Line Tamer. Congratulations! You've completed the section on common electrofusion mistakes. For comprehensive instructions, please refer to the EF Installation Manual or for more information on George Fisher's Central Plastics EF Fusion System and the assembly of components, 
visit our website at centralplastics.com. Additionally, hands-on training can be scheduled via the website or by contacting your local GF representative.